Hello and welcome to this continuing third look exploring session uh, looking at Dido Queen of Carthage primarily to discuss questions of adaptation both or audio and also just just stage uh, production sort of drilling further down into the text uh, it's partly also because our first look was a little in passing it was a uh, it was quite a brief uh, session we only did it in one go so uh, this is to drill a little further into the text as we go as we complete our journey uh, through it and this session we will go from Act 4 Scene 4 to the end of the text. Uh, so reading Aeneas today is... Alan in Suffolk. Uh, reading uh, Dido and Hermes today is... Hello, I'm Lynn. I'm in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. This is my faithful assistant, Scooter. Mm. And reading Anna, First Lord, Cupid, and Ascanius is... Hi, I'm Eric. I do not have any assistants. I just ah. have um, coffee. Coffee. Coffee is Coffee's an assistant. Coffee. That's an assistant. That's definitely very, very I'll important. Drink I've only got tea. <laughs> it's very disappointing today. Uh, and I'm your host, Robert Crichton. I will be reading uh, the stage directions. I'll also be reading all the random lords. Uh, and I may also read the nurse and the arbors as well. We shall see as we shall see. Um, but uh, yes, we're going to uh, dive into Act 4, Scene 4. Um, it all been going well between Dido and Aeneas. And then Aeneas got, had a dream. He had a dream reminding on him of his mission to go to Italy and found Rome and do all the mythological stuff. Uh, so, Act 4, Scene 4, we shift back to Dido and her sister, Anna. Oh, Anna, run to the waterside. They say these men are going aboard. It may be he will steal away with them. Stay not to answer me. Run, Anna, run. Exit, Anna. No oh, foolish Trojans that would steal from hence and not let Dido understand their drift. I would have given Akatis a store of gold and Ileonius gum and Libyan spice, the common soldiers, rich embroidered coats and silver whistles to control the winds, which Circe and sent Sicaeus when he lived. Unworthy are they of a queen's reward. See where they come. How might I do to chide? And everybody comes back on, Aeneas and all of his followers. It was time to run. Aeneas had been gone. The, the, the sails were ho is it hoising or ho hoisting? It's, it's, hoising. I think it is hoising, uh, but it mm. means hoisting. The sails were hoising up and he aboard. Is this thy love to me? Oh, princely Dido, give me leave to speak. I went to take my farewell of Achates. How Hapsacates bid me not farewell. Because I feared your grace would keep me here. To rid thee of that doubt aboard again, I charge thee put to sea and stay not here. Then let Aeneas go aboard with us. Get you aboard. Aeneas means to stay. The sea is rough. The winds blow to the shore. Oh, false Aeneas. Now the sea is rough. But when you were aboard, twas called... Enough. Thou and Akatis meant to sail away. That's not the Kartish queen, mine only son. Thinks Dido I will go and leave him here. <coughs> Aeneas, pardon me, I, for I forgot that young Ascanius lay with me this night. Love made me jealous. But to make amends, wear the imperial crown of Libya. She gives him her crown and scepter. Sway thou the prince punic scepter in my stead, and punish me, Aeneas, for the crime. This kiss shall be fair Dido's punishment. Oh, how a crown becomes Aeneas' head! Stay here, Aeneas, and command as king. How vain am I to wear this diadem, and bear this golden scepter in my hand. A perkinet of steel and not a crown, a sword and not a scepter fits Aeneas. Oh, keep them still, and let me gaze my fill. Now looks Aeneas like immortal Jove, and where is Ganymede to hold his cup, and Mercury to fly for what he calls? Ten thousand cupids hover in the air, and fan it in Aeneas' lovely face. Oh, that the clouds were here, wherein thou fledst that thou and I, unseen, might sport ourselves. Heaven, 
envious of our joys is waxen pale. And when we whisper, then the stars fall down to be partakers of our honey talk. Oh, Dido, patroness of all our lives. When I leave thee, death be my punishment. Swell raging seas, <laughs> brown wayward destinies, blow winds, threaten ye rocks and sandy shells. This is the harbour that near seeks. Let's see what tempests can annoy me now. Not all the world can take thee from mine arms. And this may command as many moors as in the sea are little water drops. And now, to make experience my love, fair sister Anna, lead my lover forth, and seated on my genet, let him ride as Dido's husband through the Punic streets. And will my guard, with Mauritanian darts, to wait upon him as their sovereign lord? What if the citizens repine thereat? Those that dislike what Dido gives in charge command my guard to slay for their offense. Shall vulgar peasants storm at what I do? The ground is mine that gives them sustenance. The air wherein they breathe, the water, fire, all that they have, their lands, their goods, their lives. And I, the goddess of all these, command Aeneas ride as Carthaginian king. Aeneas, for thy, uh, for his parentage, deserves as large a kingdom as is Libya. Aye, and unless the destinies be false, I shall be planted in as rich a land. Speak of no other land. This land is thine. Dido is thine. Henceforth, I'll thee, Lord, as I bid thee. Do as I bid thee, sister, lead the way. And from the turret, I'll behold my love. Then here in me shall flourish Priam's race. And thou and I, Achates, for revenge, for Troy, for Priam, for his fifty sons, our kinsmen's lives, and thousand guiltless souls, will lead an host against the hateful Greeks and fire proud Lacedaemon are their heads. And everyone exits, uh, apart from Dido. We will pause there. Um, okay, uh, we've got business. We've got... Um, e effectively, in terms of the logic of what's going on here, it's, it's a continuation of the previous scene, isn't it? Um, he's exited to go uh, and things. We don't need uh, to indicate really a temporal shift between here. Um, when Anna exits, we might give Anna uh, a, a, just a, something to remind us who she is. Um, an exit line possibly to... Um, Otherwise, it's still just seagulls in the background, isn't it? Um, <laughs> luckily, they've only given us one of his fellow men to talk to, so that's quite good. We don't need to worry about anyone else. Um, I've added in a kissing cue and obviously <laughs> put a crown on. Um, not so sure about uh, Aeneas may command as many moors. Might tweak that line. Um, <clears throat> but it's not the worst in the universe. Um but yeah, it's all relatively straightforward. It's really interesting how Dido shifts, though. Um, you know, when it's talking about, well, well what if the, the people don't like the idea of Aeneas here? Uh, kill them! Uh, kill, kill the... Uh, <laughs> the uh, um, oh, yeah, the, 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 uh, the vulgar peasants. I mean, she's a queen. You know, she's she's losing brownie points here um, uh, for uh, in terms of the, the, the quality of her queenship. Um but then we could argue that it's all Cupid's fault and she's not wholly rational at this point. Uh, Alan? I'm just wondering whether at, at this point um, the author is actually channeling some of the Cleopatra story. Um, you know, the somewhat exotic queen who's uh, determined to have her own way. Mm, it, it does fit into the, the kind of early modern logic for Cleopatra because she's never really presented uh, or she's rarely presented as a uh, a, a desperately sympathetic character. The sources for Cleopatra are always quite biased against mm. her. Uh, certain, you know, all of the, the, the Roman authors are very against her. Uh, it does vary in depiction in terms of drama, um, but um, uh, generally that's the, that's the general area of uh, direction. Yes, there might be a bit of that there. Uh, Lynn? I, I kind of want, the influence doesn't go in the other direction that um, early modern portrayals of Cleopatra, particularly in the drama, were influenced by I've, this characterization of Dido mm. um but you know I was sort of 
struck by what Rob had to say about this kind of it doesn't reflect very well on Dido. She seemed to be a ruler who was concerned about her people in the beginning. And now it's just like, kill them if they don't like what I do. Mm. Um, which is interesting because my response to this scene is like, boy, we really don't know whether we're supposed to admire Aeneas or not. Mm. Um, they talk about what a great warrior he is and his his buddy Akates says, oh, you know, he deserves to be king of of a land at least as as large and and wealthy as this. Um, um, but he's also being really dishonest in this scene. Oh, I wasn't leaving. I was just saying goodbye to Akates. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's that's it. Oh, but look, the wind shifted. He can't leave now. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Dido sees through it straight away. I mean, she's going, oh, now the wind's in the wrong direction, is it? Now now, now that I've come out yeah. and said said this. Um, and I mean, he does manage to turn it around as going, well, I wouldn't leave my son behind, would I? Um, and, you know, gives a very plausible reason there. And it's interesting, actually, I'm not sure whether he knows where his son is at the moment, of course, because we know where the son is. The son's been picked up um by by Venus uh, and Gino et al um but I don't know where actually Ascanius currently resides um it's interesting to to know does anyone know actually know where Ascanius yeah. is because of course we've got Cupid wandering around pretending to be Ascanius so it's an interesting yeah, yeah. Good... so Dido thinks that Ascanius is still with her but actually Ascanius is uh, is somewhere else um napping on a mountain somewhere yeah um but I don't think Aeneas actually knows that um, yeah, so it's an interesting yeah. question as to what would he have sail, sailed away because Hermes told him to in a dream and left his son behind. That's actually an interesting question. I'm not sure the play yeah. has resolved at this point. So that's an interesting question um, as to precisely what he's planning. And again, it's this question of agency. Is Aeneas doing what he's doing because he wants to do this or is he doing it because he's just been gods are ordering him and the same for yeah. dido does dido have any agency is a dido in love with yeah. Aeneas because of cupid or was she actually kind of i i think it's more a force multiplier here isn't it you know the the mm -hmm. gods are are taking something that's actually already there and just driven it to the point where dido is no longer quite thinking straight um yeah. But yeah, it's 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 it creates complications for us as a modern audience because we're I say we're we're quite keen on agency, um, and so when you have a play which is explicitly about removing it, it 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 it, it creates yeah. all sorts of issues for us. Uh, any more for any more? Uh, no. Okay, let's continue the scene then. So everybody except for. Uh, Dido and the Carthaginian lords, um, uh, of which, yeah, there's a, I, I have some issues with all the Carthaginian lords. But anyway, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, so <laughs> uh, Dido uh, continues. Speaks not an is like a conqueror. Oh, blessed tempest that did drive him in. Oh, happy sand that made him run aground. Henceforth you shall be of our Carthage gods. I... Maybe he will leave my love and seek a foreign land called Italy. Oh, that I had a charm to keep the winds within the closure of a golden ball, or that the Tyrene Sea were in mine arms, that he might suffer shipwreck on my breast, as oft as he attempts to hoist up sail. Must prevent him. Wishing will not serve. Go bid my nurse take young Ascanius and bear him into the country to her house. Aeneas will not go without his son. Yet lest he should, for I'm full of fear, bring me his oars, his tackling, and his sails. Exit first lord. What if I sink his ships? Oh, he will frown. Better he frown than I should die of grief. I cannot see him frown. It may not be. Armies of foes resolve to win this town, or impious traitors vow to have my life. Affright me not. Only Aeneas' frown is that which terrifies poor Dido's heart. No bloody spears appearing in the air presage the downfall of my empery, nor blazing comets threaten Dido's death. It is Aeneas' frown that ends my life. If he forsake me not, I never die, for in his looks I see eternity. He'll make me immortal with a kiss. Uh, enter First Lord with attendants carrying tackling, etc. 
your nurse is gone with young Ascanius, and here's Aeneas tackling oars and sails. I'm just going to pause this here. So uh, at this point, I don't see the need for a first lord. I think Anna could do that perfectly well. I I I, I okay. think you know Anna seems to be very in charge of things, um, and I I don't even need to think. You know, we can have some. Do we need? Do we need to make it? You know, the, um, I suppose we do. We, I could tweak the line a bit, but here's Aeneas tackling oars and sails. You know, the, uh, grumbling men in the background, dragging sounds. I, is how I feel that might be done. Yeah. Um, but e even there, we might not even need to bother with the sound effect. It's just, um, I just wonder if to tweak it, the, the um, Aeneas tackling oars and sails are, uh, are, you know, are down or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, Dido continues to be quite, is ex the exposition on Dido's emotional state is, is actually very clear here. You know, it's, uh, it, you're not afraid of, uh, you know, saying terrible, how you are not care. You don't care about your kingdom anymore. She doesn't care. Um, yeah. That is not what's frightened her. It's just simply his frown. Yeah. Uh, that's quite a fall uh, for Dido at this stage. Isn't that? Yeah, sometimes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, structural things aside, Dido has more to say before the scene ends. Okay. Uh, uh, first I said his line. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Are these the sails that, in despite of me, packed with the winds to bear in his hence? I'll hang ye in the chamber where I lie. Drive, if you can, my house to Italy. I'll set the casement open that the winds may enter in and once again conspire against the life of me, poor Carthage queen. But though you go, he stays in Carthage still and let rich Carthage fleet upon the seas so I may have Aeneas in mine arms. Is this the wood that grew in Carthage plains that would be toiling in the watery billows to rob their mistress of her Trojan guest? O oh, cursed tree, hadst thou but wit or sense to measure how I prize Aeneas' love, thou wouldst have leapt from out the sailor's hands and told me that Aeneas meant to go. And yet I blame thee not, thou art but wood, the water, which our poets term a nymph, why did it suffer thee to touch her breast, and shrunk not back, knowing my love was there? The water is an element, no nymph, why should I blame Aeneas for his flight? Who died, oh, blame not him, but break his oars. These are the instruments that launched him forth. There's not so much as these base tackling too, but dares to heap up sorrow to my heart. Was it not you that hoisted up the sails? Why burst you not, and they fell in the seas? For this will Dido tie ye full of knots, and shear ye all asunder with her hands. Now serve to chastise ship boys for their faults. You shall no more offend the Carthage queen. Now let him hang my favors on his masts and see if those will serve instead of sails. For tackling, let him take the chains of gold I have bestowed upon his followers. Instead of oars, let him use his hands to swim to Italy. I'll keep these sure. Come, bear them in. And exit uh, attendants, etc., with all the oars and stuff. So, yeah, there's sort of room for a bit of foley work here, as 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 Dido flings stuff to one mm -hmm. side and 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 plays around with with sails, etc. And and so there is there is sort of a tactile quality to some of that. The, 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 an actor in performance will be able to really play around with, actually, um, is, is, is gives them something to do um, with with a long speech like this. Uh, Alan? Yeah, I mean, you could also have the people doing the hauling making generally grumbling noises in the background of, ouch, me foot. Uh, well, I wouldn't quite go that far, but uh, you're right. When they first come in, that was sort of how I saw it, you know. Urgh! scraping jangling noise and then thunk um and then leave dido leave leave dido to do <laughs> dido's speech um i think i don't want to upstage dido <laughs> uh, oh god that you know what sense. you know what they're gonna want us to put them back on the ship again in a minute oh, god. you know what yeah. these people are like yeah. oh, god. Yeah. there's no I bet there's no bonus either you know I haven't, I haven't had a decent tea break all day exactly exactly <laughs> um Okay. These are um, crappy tippers. <laughs> oh, yeah, the worst, the worst. Those Trojans, they haven't got any they haven't got any coinage, so it's not like they're gonna thank you. And you know, the Queen, well, you know, she's busy, isn't she? Busy. She's kind of off her nut, isn't it? Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, right. Um, so yeah, it's relatively straightforward. We've got a bit of potential uh, sound in there, but it's all it's all Dido, and we know who Dido is. Um, background seagulls uh, is all there. So um, we shift to Act Four, Scene Five, which is the nurse uh, with Cupid. <laughs> Uh, who's still disguised. We've not met the nurse before. Totally new character who just turns up for a little bit of action. Um, I was going to read that, but I can pass the nurse over for this scene at least to somebody else. So, uh, um, Alan, would you like to be the nurse? For this, scene, for this scene only. Um, so, yes, we have this odd scene with Cupid and a nurse. My Lord Ascanius, you must go with me. Whither must I go? I'll stay with my mother. No, thou shalt go with me unto my house. I have an orchard that hath store of plums, brown almonds, services, ripe figs, dates, dewberries, apples, yellow oranges. Garden where there are, where are beehives full of honey, musk roses, and a thousand sort of flowers. And in the midst doth run a silver stream, where thou shalt see the red gilled fishes leap white swans, and many lovely waterfowls. Now speak, Ascanius, will you go or no? Come, come, I'll go. How far hence is your house? But hereby, child, we shall get there thither straight. Nurse, I'm weary. Will you carry me? Aye, so you'll dwell with me and call me mother. So you'll love me? I care not if I do. That I might see to live to see this boy a man. How prettily he laughs. Go, ye wag. You'll be a twigger when you come to age. Say, Dido, what ye will. I am not old. I'll be no more a widow. Young. I'll have a husband. Or else a lover. Husband and no teeth. No, oh, what mean I to have such foolish thoughts? Foolish is love. A toy. Of sacred Jove. If there be any heaven in earth, it is love especially in women of your years. Blush for shame. Why shouldst thou think of love? A grave and not a lover fits thy age. Grave? Why, I may live a hundred years. Four score is but a girl's age. Love is sweet. My veins are withered, my sinews dry. Why do I think of love? Now I should die. Come, nurse. Well, if he come a-wooing, he shall speed. Oh, how wise was I to say him nay? And they exit. This is a really odd scene. <laughs> I mean, it, it's I, and it is this question of what Cupid is doing to the nurse. Uh, you know, is it is it just Cupid being in the room? Mm -hmm. Does this stop, but, does like... this stuff to you, or is Cupid actually just constantly poking her with an arrow? Um, <laughs> or is there a cue point for that kind of thing? Um, and it's course of who's who's commissioned this nurse? Whose nurse is this? Because I thought Ascanius went off with with the goddesses earlier. I, that was the impression I got. Um, so I, 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 I'm a little I, I'm a little confused as to whose nurse. I mean, I know whose nurse. It's Dido, It's it's within Dido's household. Um, but it's yeah. It's 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 where Ascanius was and and how this all sort of functions is is sort of i'm a bit confused uh, i'm not really i'm just being awkward um but you know uh, alan yeah one thing on the wordage in the early speech there when the nurse is describing the orchard which had store of plums brown almonds services ripe figs and dates i'm just wondering whether there's a word there that's got mistranscribed mm. Maybe. I don't know off the top of my head because I am in the wrong house to have the answers to that in my fingertips, but I have marked it for a question. Yeah, it, um, it, it just doesn't it seem just, to quite flow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Ascanius, the, the, the Venus and Juno. Um, Ascanius shall be, in, shall be my child, whom I will bear to Ida in mine arms and couch him in Adonis purple down. So... That was the last time someone we saw someone in charge of of Ascanius. Um, was that earlier scene with Venus? So have they gone? Okay, we'll return it. Yeah, I I, I say I'm 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 confused, uh, Alan. Yeah, no, it, 
this isn't Ascanius at all. This is Cupid in drag. Oh, of course it. Oh, God. Yes, you're right. No, you're right. So, yes, this is the other Ascanius. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> okay. That's the <laughs> real Ascanius. This is the fake Ascanius. Yes. yes. Yes, of course. Of course it's with Dido's nurse. Of course it is. Yeah, this, it's this, this is the stunt double. Yes. Okay. It's fine. <laughs> I, I'm a professional idiot. This is why I'm here. Uh, Eric. Uh, yeah, I just looked it up. Apparently, there is a type of tree called a service tree. Mm. So... I suspect it's it's mm. accurate. It's just weird, um, yeah. in that sense. Mm. Yeah, yeah I was thinking with the where with the you know where she's talking about the orchard store of plums, blah, blah blah. You can have like the orchard sound effects of like <laughs> if you, you really yeah. want to keep the scene. Yeah, um, we, can, we can put in some bird yeah. song. You know, the sound of apples singing. You know, that's uh, you know it's uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, we've got to make sure it's it's clear that it's Cupid, not as uh, with Cupid mm -hmm. as a, yeah. It's clear yeah. Uh, that that is that is clear. Okay, that's it for Act Four. Um, any any additional thoughts up before we go into the long Act Five? It's just one scene. It flows yeah. into itself on and on and on and on. Right, okay. Uh, Act 5, scene 1 then. Enter Aeneas with a paper in his hand, drawing the platform of the city. I don't know how accurate that is as an original stage direction. There is Aeneas and all of his men, who I will read one after the other just to <laughs> save the headache. Uh, okay, Aeneas, take it away. Triumph, my mates. Our travels are at an end. Here will Aeneas build a statelier Troy than that which grim Atreides overthrew. Carthage shall point her petty walls no more, but I will grace them with a fairer frame and clad her in a crystal livery, wherein the day may ever more delight. From golden India, Ganges will I fetch, whose wealthy streams may wait upon her towers and triple-wise entrench her round about. The sun from Egypt shall rich odours bring, wherewith his burning beams like labouring bees that load their thighs with hibblers honey spoils shall here unburden their exhaled sweets and plant our pleasant suburbs with their fumes what length or breadth shall this brave town contain not past four thousand paces at the most but what shall it be called troy as before that i have not determined with myself let it be turned Inia by your name, no, rather Ascania by your little son. Nay, no, you know, I will have it called Ancyseron, of my old father's name. Enter Hermes with Ascanius. Aeneas, stay. Jove's herald bids thee stay. Who do I see? Jove's winged messenger? Welcome to Carthage, new erected town. Why, cousin, stand you building cities here? and beautifying the empire of this queen, while Italy is clean out of thy mind? Too, too forgetful of thine own affairs, why wilt thou so betray thy son's good hap? The king of God sent me from highest heaven to sound this angry message in thine ears. Vain man, what monarchy expects thou here? Or with what thought sleepst thou in Libya's shore, if all... If that all glory hath forsaken thee, and thou despise the praise of such attempts, yet think upon Ascanius' prophecy, and young Ulysses more than thousand years, whom I have brought from Ida, where he slept, and bore young Cupid unto Cyprus Isle. This was, that, this was my mother that beguiled the queen, and made me take my brother from my son, no marvel, Dido, though thou be in love, that daily dampless Cupid in thy arms. Welcome, sweet child. Where hast thou been this long? Eating sweet comfit comfits? I don't know how you pronounce it. Yeah, comfits. Um, eating sweet comfits with Queen Dido's maid, who ever since hath lulled me in her arms. Suggest us, bear him hence unto our ships. Let Dido spy him, keep him for a pledge. And the pointless suggestus exits with Ascanius. Vence thou thy time about this little boy, and gives not ear to the charge I bring? I tell thee, thou must straight to Italy, 
or else bide the wrath of frowning Jove. And exit Hermes Cross. How should I put into the raging deep who have no sails nor tackling for my ships? What, would the gods have me, Decalion-like, float up and down where'er the billows drive? Though she prepared my fleet and gave me ships, yet she had taken away my oars and masts, and left me neither sail nor stern aboard. And there we will pause. So, Hermes, we're going to need to give a entrance exit sound effect to say this is a god uh doesn't need any godlike sound i think uh i do love the way hermes is really cross about <laughs> sorry excuse me uh i'm the messenger here uh why are you faffing around talking to your child could you work for, you know god i'm a god from the other god, you know um Please. yeah it's it's <laughs> I, I, I quite like the fact he's really miffed, and also the fact he had to turn up in person. You know, I sent a dream. Did you not get the dream? Um, and yet yeah, again, we've got this slightly flip-flop thing going on with Aeneas. You know, he comes on going, hey, we're going to build a great city here. It's going to be our city. We'll give it a name, and it's, going, it's not going to be very big, but it's going to be great. And, um, you know, what are we going to call it, people? And it's like, that's when Hermes turns up. And it's just like... If I was his followers, I'd be really worried about Aeneas because he just keeps going from one extreme to another. The others aren't affected by gods in the same way as he is. Um, so what's Achates thinking throughout all of this? What's what's Ileonius thinking about all, all the way through? Because Aeneas yeah. can't keep his, you know, keep on mission for more, more than 30 yeah. seconds. I, yeah, I, I can sort of imagine them going, like, I don't really care whether we're going to stay or go. I just want to know mm. whether we're going to stay or go. What what yeah. what what is the decision process here? Uh Alan. Yeah, the the Ascanius line in there where he's saying eating sweet comforts with Queen Dido's maid mm. seems to refer back to the previous scene in which Cupid disguised yeah, as Ascanius was with uh maid bleak nurse to Dido. Mm. So there's something bizarre there. I pre presume that's original and legitimate, but it's a little bit of a discontinuity. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know necessarily that is in his mind. Maybe that's how I, I don't imagine the gods showed him god things. So maybe they, they, they lulled him into believing that or something along those lines. Uh, I don't think it's a discontinuity. I think that's just... Uh, uh, that's just a license. But it is a good point. Yeah, he's not actually literally been with Dido's maid. He was with Queen Dido, um, who lulled her in her arms. Uh, Dido mm. did that herself. Um, so you almost could make it eating sweet comforts with Queen Dido, who ever since have lulled me in her arms. That would, that would, but again, I don't think it matters. Mm. Um, and, and, but it is and, odd, isn't it? And, unless, of course, Venus had disguised herself with, or he'd taken Venus to be the maid. Hmm. Yes, it's that would the other make possibility. Sense. Yeah, that would make sense that she's taken. He's taken Venus. Uh, I mean, he was asleep at the time, but um, mm. yeah, um, it's all a dream as far mm. as he's concerned. I think that's fine. Uh, but nothing again to apart from giving Hermes a sort of godlike entrance. Uh, we're once again a few paper sounds, paper SFX, um, possibly. You might not even bother. It might be you know gilding the lily. Um, but, you know, people can do their own paper foley work if they wanted to. Uh, okay, we have the entrance of Iarbus, who uh, I will uh, read for the moment. And uh, we'll see how that goes, unless there's any additional thoughts on that little bit. No. Okay. Oh, Eric. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of intrigued by this bit about, like, well, you're wasting your time and not even listening to me. The, the, the Hermes is, like, stomping off. Um, is there, uh, like, is there a way to sort of... Because, I mean, okay, I've listened to various podcasts and, like, audio recordings and stuff that you've done as well. And I'm just wondering if there's a way to signify people exiting or not. Because mm. um, entering is easy, but then and exiting is... Gods are easy because they can go um, you can give them a sound effect or a uh, or yeah. 
you know, you can do anything with gods. Little People, bell. you have to send ages trying to figure out, oh, do, are your footsteps really necessary? Because footsteps are very annoying. Yeah. And then yeah. do you put a door closing after it? Oh, God, kill me, kill me now. Um, so, you know, there, there, there are options there. But as it's only Hermes, sometimes you just don't bother. Sometimes you don't need to pull it in the mix. You're just over, over egging it. And it's fine to just have voices in a room. Um, yeah. And again, are they in a room or are they outdoors? Um, where are these people? Um, well, what outdoors, is the lo- I think. Hmm? <laughs> well, specifically in this one, I think they're outdoors, aren't they? Well, yeah. yeah. Um, and there's a reason why they're outdoors, which we'll get to in a bit, because <laughs> it's so much easier to burn yourself to death uh, on a pyre <laughs> outside than doing it inside. It's just it's just logistically easier. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll go from the entrance of Yabas, who I, for the moment, will be reading. How now, Aeneas? Sad? What means these dumps? Yeah, but I'm clean beside myself. Jove hath heaped on me such a desperate charge, which neither art nor reason may achieve, nor I devise by what means to contrive. As how, I pray, may I entreat you tell? With speed he bids me sail to Italy, when as I want both rigging for my fleet and also furniture for these my men. If that be all, then cheer thy drooping looks, for I will furnish thee with such supplies. Let some of those thy followers go with me, and they shall have whatsoe'er thou needst. Thanks, good Iarvis, for thy friendly aid. The Cartes and the rest shall wait on thee, whilst I rest thankful for this courtesy. Everybody exits apart from Aeneas. Now will I haste unto Lavinian shore, and raise a new foundation to old Troy. Witness the gods and witness heaven and earth. How loath I am to leave these Libyan bounds, but that eternal Jupiter commands. Enter Dido. I fear I saw Aeneas' little son led by Achates to the Trojan fleet. If it be so, his father means to fly. But here he is. Now, Dido, try thy wit. Aeneas, wherefore go thy, thy men aboard? Why are thy ships new rigged? Or to what end, launched from the haven, lie thy in the road? Pardon me, though I ask. Love makes me ask. No, pardon me, if I resolve thee why. Aeneas will not feign with his dear love. I must from hence. This day, swift Mercury, when I was laying a platform for these walls, sent from his father Jove, appeared to me, and in his name rebuked me bitterly for lingering here, neglecting Italy. But yet Aeneas will not leave his love. I am commanded by immortal Jove to leave this town and pass to Italy, and therefore must have thought. These words proceed not from Aeneas' heart. Not from my heart, for I can hardly go, and yet I may not stay. Dido, farewell. Farewell? Is this amends for Dido's love? Do Trojans use to quit their lovers thus? Farewell, may Dido, so Aeneas stay. I die if I, my Aeneas say farewell. Then let me go and never say farewell. Let me go. Farewell, I must from hence. These words are poison to poor Dido's soul. Oh, speak like my Aeneas, like my love. Why look'st thou toward the sea? The time hath been when Dido's beauty chained thine eyes to her. Am I less fair when thou sawst me first? O oh, then, Aeneas, tis for grief of thee. Say thou wilt stay in Carthage with thy queen, and Dido's beauty will return again. Aeneas, say, how canst thou take thy leave? Wilt thou kiss Dido? O oh, thy lips have sworn to stay with Dido. Canst thou take her hand? Thy hand and mine have blighted mutual faith. Therefore, unkind Aeneas, must thou say, then let me go, and never say farewell. O oh, Queen of Carthage, wert thou ugly black, and ears could not choose but hold thee dear. Yet I must yet must he not gainsay the gods behest. Okay, just gonna pause there. Yes, that that line's going. Um uh yeah, uh that 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 we were I thought we were getting to that line. I was waiting for it to turn up. Um yeah, no, that's that's definitely going. But we do actually have what's here um, going to the actual scene itself. Uh, we've got some interesting things going on. I do like Iabas just turning up sad. Well, 
you in the dumps? Why, why are you so sad? Um, and he's going, oh, I want to leave and I can't. And Yarvis is going, <laughs> yeah. Get rid of him. Sacrificing a bull works. Um, thank you, gods. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, about that. We'll see about that. But... Yeah. So, Yarbus is, is delighted, of course, going, yeah, I'll get you the ta- all, all the ship gear you need. As it happens, I'm a wholesaler of, uh, of ship supplies. <laughs> I know a guy. I know, I know a guy. Yeah, I know some people. But then we, we were talking so, that we've, we haven't really had, shall we say, a satisfying love scene between Dido and Aeneas. We've had some good stuff. Um, but you know, this, this is where you do feel here that Aeneas doesn't want to go in some of these exchanges that, you know, I've got to go, but I don't want to go. And all this stuff about farewell, um, let me go. I must go hence. Um, I, I don't think he's as into Dido as Dido is into him, but there is actual emotion here that I, I'm kind of buying, um, and that there is something you know this this is a this is a uh, a love thing that's gone horribly horribly wrong um and and that's uh, that's quite interesting feel free to disagree or agree or say anything anybody got uh, any additional thoughts eric well it depends how you play it i think cuz like it could be sort of that like um Looking for an excuse to get out. <laughs> mm. oh, he could be um, lying. He could be lying. Yeah. This is the thing. Um, but uh, by and large, with with you know people, you know, signpost lying a lot more. Um, yeah. Uh, but it could be there. It could be there. There is room for maneuver for the actors. Yeah, yeah. Which is what I like about this scene. It's kind of like you don't know if he, if like, um. Kind of because she's basically going, Oh, yeah, right, yeah. The, the, the gods told you, yeah, right. And yeah. he's going, They did. I mean, I've got, I, I have an email, um, <laughs> uh, right, or, or something. Um, yeah, look at this text message, mm. yeah, don't delete it. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. This is an interesting scene, mm. and we are midway. I only pause just to make clear the yet we're cutting those lines um a dido um uh continue the scenette the gods what gods be those that seek my death wherein have i offended jupiter that he would take aeneas from mine arms oh no the gods weigh not what lovers do it is aeneas calls aeneas hence and woeful dido by these blubbered cheeks by this right hand that by our and by our spousal rights desires Aeneas to remain with her. Si bene quid de te... Okay, there are yeah. three lines of Latin here and two yeah. in response by Aeneas, which I think we're probably going to cut, aren't we? I, mm. I, 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 feel, I feel oddly un, unmoved by the Latin. Um, blah, 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 blah. Aeneas says something back. Dido, continue, <laughs> please, in English. <laughs> okay. Willingly. Hast thou forgot how many neighbor kings were up in arms for making thee my love? How Carthage did rebel? Iarbus storm? And all the world calls me a second Helen for being entangled by a stranger's looks? So thou wouldst prove as true as Paris did. Would, would as fair Troy was, Carthage might be sacked, and I be called a second Helena. And I a son by thee, the grief were less that I might see Aeneas in his face. But if thou goest, what canst thou leave behind, but rather will augment than ease my woe? In vain, my love, thou spend'st my fainting breath. If words might move me, I were overcome. And wilt thou not be moved with Dido's words? My mother was no goddess, perjured man, nor Dardanus the author of thy stock. But thou art sprung from Scythian Caucasus, and tigers of Hyrcania gave thee suck. O oh, foolish Dido, to forbear this long, was thou not wrecked upon this Libyan shore, and camest thou to Dido like a fisher's swain? Repaired I not thy ships, made thee a king, and all thy needy followers noblemen? O oh, serpent, that came creeping from the shore, and I for pity harbored in my bosom, wilt thou now slay me with thy venom sting, and hiss at Dido for preserving thee? Go. Go and spare not. Seek out Italy. I hope that that which love forbids me do, 
the rocks and sea gulfs will perform at large, and thou shalt perish in the billows' ways, to whom poor Dido doth bequeath revenge. I, traitor, and the wave shall cast thee up where thou and false Achates first set foot, which, if it chance, I'll give ye burial and weep upon your lifeless carcass, though thou nor he will pity me a whit. Why starest thou in my face? If thou wilt stay, leap in mine arms. Mine arms are open wide. If not, turn from me, and I'll turn from thee. For though thou hast the heart to say farewell, I have no power to stay thee. Indeed, he's already gone. Is he gone? I but he'll come again. He cannot go. He loves me too, too well to serve me so. Yet he that in my sight would not relent will, being absent, be obdurate still. By this he's got to the water side. And, see, the sailor's taken by the hand, but he shrinks back, and now remembering me returns amain. Welcome, welcome, my love. But where's Aeneas? Ah, oh, he's gone, he's gone. Enter Anna. What means my sister thus to rave and cry? Oh, Anna, my Aeneas is aboard, and leaving me will sail to Italy. Once didst thou go, and he came back again. Now bring him back, and thou shalt be a queen, and I will live a private life with him. Wicked Aeneas. Call him not wicked, sister, speak him fair, and look upon him with a mermaid's eye, and tell him I ne'er vowed at all this gulf the desolation of his native Troy, nor sent a thousand ships unto the walls, nor ever violated faith to him. Request him gently, Anna, to return. I crave but this. He stay a tide or two, that I may learn to bear it patiently. If he depart thus, if he depart thus suddenly, I die. Run, Anna, run. Stay not to answer me. I go, fair sister. Heavens grant good success. Exit, Anna. Enter nurse. Uh, Alan, continue being nurse, I think. Oh, Dido, your little son Ascanius is gone. He lay with me last night. And in the morning he was stolen from me. I think some fairies have beguiled me. Oh, cursed hag and false dissembling wretch that slashed me with thy harsh and hellish tale. Now for some petty gift has let him go, and I am thus deluded of my boy. Away with her to prison presently. And uh, attendants to carry her away. Traitress too kenned and cursed sorceress. I know not what you mean by treason, I. I'm as true as any one of yours. Away with her. Suffer her not to speak. And exit nurse with attendance. My uh, sister comes. We'll pause I there. Like... We'll okay. pause there. Let's take in uh, some some uh, this. Um, so poor nurse. In, in some collateral damage for is, you. Yeah. Uh, we were talking earlier. She really doesn't care about her people anymore. Uh, doesn't mm. even care about someone. The poor nurse. You know, it's... Uh, she has indeed been beguiled by fairies, um, uh, you know, in, 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 in the sense, if we think of Cupid as a sort of little imp type figure. Um, so, yeah, we had a massive speech from Dido, uh, Aeneas disappearing midway. Um, I don't know if, for an audio version, we want to demonstrate that with, you know, footsteps and tippy-toeing away or how that works, or whether just let the... Is he gone? Just, just come out um, and land that way. I, I, I think that might be just as effective as, as tippy toeing Aeneas while she's talking, because um, she repeats it enough times, um, and then calls on on Anna to come out. Footsteps, footsteps for Anna. Um, dragging nurse. Uh, I think we're going to have to have some attendant dragging action. <laughs> Come on, oh, kind of stuff. Um, I'm I'm sure we can improvise that. That'll be fine. Um, but yeah, again, it's still quite straightforward. The words are to carry most of this. There's very little here that the words aren't doing for us, which is very very satisfying. Uh, but yeah, poor nurse, poor nurse. Uh, any other thoughts? No. Okay. Let's uh, let's continue the scene. There isn't a lot left to do. Um, enter Anna uh, to Dido. 
before I came, Aeneas was aboard, uh, aboard, yes, um, and spying me, hoist up the sails amain. But I cried out, Aeneas, force Aeneas, stay. Then Gan he wag his hand, and which yet held up, made me suppose you would have heard me speak. Then Gan they drive into the ocean, which when I viewed, cried, Aeneas, stay. Dido, fair Dido, wills Aeneas, stay. Yet he whose hearts of adamant or flint, my tears nor plaints could mollify wit. Then carelessly I rent my hair for grief, which seemed to all, though he beheld me not, began to move him to redress my ruth and stay a while to hear what I could say. But he clapped under patches, sailed away. Oh, Anna, Anna, I will follow him. How can you go when you have he hath all your fleet? I'll frame me wings of wax like Icarus, and o'er his ships will soar unto the sun that they may melt, and I fall in his arms. Or else I'll make a prayer unto the waves that I may swim to him like Triton's niece. Oh, Anna, Anna, fetch Orion's harp that I may tice a dolphin to the shore and ride upon his back unto my love. Look, sister, look, lovely Aeneas' ships. See, see, the billows heave him up to heaven, and now down falls the keel into the deep. Oh, sister, sister, take away the rocks. They'll break his ships. Oh, Proteus, Neptune, Jove, save, save Aeneas, Dido's leafest love. Now has he come on shore, safe without hurt. But see, Akates will him put to sea, and all the sailors merry make for joy. But he, remembering me, shrinks back again. See where he comes. Welcome, welcome, my love. Ah, oh, sister, leave these idle fantasies. Sweet sister, cease. Remember who you are. Dido I am, unless I be deceived. And must I rave thus for a runagate? Must I make ships for him to sail away? Nothing can bear me to him but a ship, and he hath all my fleet. What shall I do but die in fury of this oversight? I, I must be murderer of myself. No, but I am not. Yet I will be straight, and be glad, for now I have found a mean to rid me from these thoughts of lunacy. Not far from hence there is a woman, famous for arts, daughter unto the nymph Hesperides, who willed me sacrifice his ticing relics. Go, Anna, bid my servants bring me fire. And exit Anna. We'll pause there. So Dido's quite um all over the place here um and she's literally seeing literally seeing yeah. you know um you know is that a literal delusion uh is she actually skimming yeah. it's, it's hallucinating and and seeing ah. these things or is this just a, a sort of poetic license it does seem to that anna is really quite worried about her um oh. And of course, Anna tried everything to stop stop uh, uh, Aeneas going. She even rent her hair. <laughs> hair renting was not a success. It had no effect whatsoever. Uh, I don't think this is one of those instances where you need to do the sort of flashback sort of thing, and you know, have have because there isn't really anything there. Um, so that's sort of fine. Uh, but yeah, Dido has a moment to pull herself together, and of course she has to come up with an excuse to do the fire you know she has to say oh no i'm fine i'm fine i'm perfectly fine i'm fine i want a big pyre set up for a totally sane reason um, <laughs> yeah, do this thing yeah hmm. so those sort of moments where there's a bit of an aside midway through um uh where you know uh yes i will be straight yes you will um but not with anyone else. Uh, so yeah, we're into the final moments here. Uh, we have the return of the uh, Arbus. Uh, any other thoughts? Well, this bit, you kind of, I don't know if you want, like, well, maybe not music, but like some sort of soundscape for Dido. I'll frame me wings of wax and stuff. Um, it's a bit like, I don't know, it reminds me of, well, you're in, yeah. Um, it reminds me of a bit of like the aria Un Bel Di Vedremo, which is like all about like basically hallucinating a life together. But mm. um, yeah. 
Yes, do you, do you need the sort of the, 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 the hammering in her head kind of situation? I'm not sure you need to. I mean, this is the thing about this play is so much of it is sort of just in the words that actually to, to overdo it might be too much. And maybe yeah. in the same way as this earlier when we were talking about, you know, uh, uh, Aeneas PTSDing and having flashbacks about Troy, do we need do we need to overlap too much on top of that? Or actually, do we just let the, 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 the text do the talking? Uh, Alan? Yeah, I, th I think the thing is that whoever acts this role would need to spend quite a lot of time getting the head around all of the screeching turns within it mm -hmm. because yeah. she changes direction so many times. Mm. Uh, that would actually be quite tricky, mm. I think, to get across without a heck of a lot of preparation work. Mm. Oh, yes. No, there'll be rehearsal. Yeah. Um, but yes, it, I mean, it's an opportunity, not a burden. I think all of mm. that. It's, uh, it, it really is. There's some, there's some lovely mm. stuff to get your, your teeth into. Mm. Um, okay, uh, we will go from. Anna's been sent off to get some fire uh, for perfectly rational reasons. Uh, enter Iabus. How long would Dido mourn a stranger's flight that have dishonoured her and Carthage both? How long shall I, with grief, consume my days and reap no guerdon for my truest love? Enter attendants with wood and torches, etc. They're making the pyre when they're instructed. Iarbus, talk not of Aeneas. Let him go. Lay to thy hands and help me make a fire that shall consume all that this stranger left. For I intend a private sacrifice to cure my mind that melts for unkind love. But afterwards, well... Dido, grant me love. Ay, ay, Iarbus. After this is done, none in the world shall have my love but thou. So leave me now. Let none approach this place. Exuant Iarbus and attendants. Now, Dido, with these relics burn thyself and make Aeneas famous to the world for perjury and slaughter of a queen. Here lie the sword that in the darksome cave he drew and swore by to be true to me. Thou shalt burn first. Thy crime is worse than his. Here lie the garment which I clothed him in. When first he came on shore, perish thou too. These letters, lines, and perjured papers all shall burn to cinders in this precious flame. And now, ye gods, that guide the starry frame and order all things at your high dispose, grant though the traitors land in Italy, they may be still tormented with unrest, and from mine ashes let a conqueror rise, and that may revenge this treason to a queen by plowing up his country with the sword. Betwixt this land and that be never league. Litoria litoribus contraria fluctibus undas imprecor arma armis pugnet ipsique nepotes. Live False Aeneas, truest Dido dies. Sick, sick, juvat irae sub umbras. And throws herself onto the flames, presumably an extremely long scream. Um, see how long and uncomfortable we can make the audience uh, before a Anna enters. Oh, help, Yarbus, Dido in these flames hath burned herself. Ah, me, unhappy me. Cursed Iarbus, die to expiate the grief that tires upon thine inward soul. Dido, I come to thee. I, me, Aeneas, stabs himself and dies. What can my tears or cries prevail me now? Dido is dead. Iarbus slain. Iarbus, my dear love. Oh, sweet Iarbus, Anna's soul delight. What fatal destiny envies me thus to see my sweet Yarbus slay himself? But Anna now shall honor thee in death and mix her blood with thine. This shall I do, and uh, this shall I do, that gods and men may pity this my death and rue our ends senseless of life or breath. Now, sweet Yarbus, stay, I come to thee, and stabs herself. Yes. Maybe not in uh, that voice. <laughs> in in exactly that voice. Uh yes. Uh so watermelon and knife action uh at that point. Um so yeah, we got flames. Um it's it's hard to do that live. We'd have to have a long recorded cue uh to play in for that, but that's easy enough to do. Plenty of fire out there. Um and yeah, and then 
I'm tempted to do live foley for the uh, the, uh, the the stabbing. I, th I think we can we can do that. That's not too difficult, um, and it's really quite grim. So um, that's 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 reasonably effective. Um, uh, in in this instance, I think we might keep the Latin um, because it is mm. it is her closing lines, and and that's the kind of thing that I I think we could we could have a lot of fun with. Um, and also, you know, spend a bit of time making sure we know what it means, um, or oh, the actor knows what it means, and uh, and so that it gets the 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 the, the right landing on it. Uh, Lynn, I think some of those lines might actually be the Latin from the original poem, mm. particularly "sic sic uviat ire sub umbras," um, "sic sic thus thus." Mm. It's actually on a model poetic. That's that's the sound of her stabbing herself mm. in the poem. She stabs herself and then throws herself on the pyre um as she dies uh so sick sick is supposed to be the sound of the the the, the stabbing mm. um so thus thus is not really quite the same effect mm. um but yeah there's something about that word that yeah is worth keeping totally mm. agree yeah i, I mean I, I we might play around with the earlier letter i mean this thing for the audio version we will record a take of all of the cuts, so that we can we can uh, present at least a rough cut of, of all of the words. Uh, but for a live performance, um, I'd like to be trimming it back a bit. I mean, it's it's not an excessively long play as it stands, um, but I I do have a target of, of of trimming maybe fifteen minutes out of the running time uh, based on our second look running time. So uh, in in a live performance, it might be shorter anyway, five minutes. It's amazing what adrenaline does to running times. Uh, five minutes disappear, uh, almost sometimes overnight, um, which is always always quite pleasing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this isn't a play where I'm I'm looking at it going, we need to cut it back. Uh, I just want to make you know trims for clarity. Um, addition to characters, yeah. Uh, yes, eliding a few characters because they're not very important. Um, and that's not to say they won't still be named. They just won't. We just won't have necessarily a, a separate voice actor for them. We might do actually. We we potentially have the the capacity for all three Trojans. I just don't know if we can be asked. Um, basically, <laughs> uh, four you know, three or four Trojan uh, warriors, um, but they're not very important. And I say. Uh, the fact that actually the core, the core cast of this is only, I say, what well, it's really, it's Dido and Aeneas and everybody else sort of dances in and out. Even Anna isn't, even Anna and the Arbors aren't that major role, um, in this. Yeah, in terms of lines. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not, they're not big. I mean, Arbors sort of got a second wind, uh, last session in the middle of the play. He becomes quite important, but at this end point, he doesn't actually say a lot. Does he? He doesn't get that much of an. He doesn't even get much of a death speech. It's sort of right, right. That's it. I'm off. Yeah, like two lines uh, or something. Yeah, <laughs> four. Yeah, uh, Alan. Yeah, I, th I think uh, I would agree with you in terms of the followers of Aeneas, but for a stage production, you would need as many bodies as you can. Oh, yeah. You can get on stage just to give an an indication, and there's several crowd scenes with the attendants and so on that. Uh, need those bodies but basically non-speaking roles other than generally rhubarbing or grumbling yeah and and this is the this is thinking about this play also within the context of a repertoire in terms of performing this back to back with other plays uh you want roles or where you know you only say a line or two because the next day you're doing a major role or something so in that sense that's not inherently a problem uh, it's it's only a problem for a modern production in the sense that we just don't do those kinds of uh, ASM roles. Um, you know the 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 the, the, techni the technician who also you know the acting stage manager um, kind of role doesn't isn't really a thing in the same way as it was you know fifty years ago. Um, which is actually a bit of a shame, uh, but then we just don't we just don't have repertory theatre anymore. It just doesn't really exist. Um, there are there are minor holdouts, but basically um, that kind of pattern of theatre making doesn't exist anymore, which is a real shame. Um, uh, uh, and you know, it would be nice if we could revive it as a concept, even if it's only for a few weeks. Um, 
which is sort of what we're trying to do, even if it's a script in hand audio recording. So yeah, so in that sense, there's a logic if we're doing this in rep with uh, with a few other productions, that uh, that those smaller roles will have actors for them, will have people to do them. It's just whether it's clear who they are or whether it matters. It, it doesn't matter if you know who Suggestus is. You know, he's some guy in the background. We just need to know he's a Trojan. Um, so this one, yeah, uh, I think the only problem with this play was what was the problems we identified in the first session. It's the opening session with the gods, which is deeply unclear, and then mm. some occasionally over-egging of the classical pudding. Um, where you put in one line of el uh, elaboration too many um, uh, and, and just want to take that back a bit. Otherwise, it's a really tight show, actually. There's very little, you know, it's weird. The nurse is weird. I, I, I love the nurse, but the nurse is really weird. And I kind <laughs> of don't, you know, there's part of me going, is, that, is our journey really necessary? Um, apart from the fact that I really love the scene. It's just doesn't add anything in terms of plot because <laughs> you just need the nurse running on saying the baby's disappeared that's all you need you don't need that whole scene establishing who the nurse is um but it's great that they do i absolutely love it and uh, yeah um, with her own concerns and like sort of you know um it's a, yeah it's a really yeah. interesting meditation on desire does not go out just because you get older you know, you can yeah. still desire and want love, and, and you know, and 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 the other thing, um, you know, that 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 is it's not inherently some sort of diminishing resort, um, which is lovely to hear in a play, especially a play from this period. Frankly, um, it's slightly done for laughs, but you know, humans are weird. Um, so, uh, Alan, yeah, I, I think actually you've just hit it there. The the nurse scene is a bit of light relief from what in in the rest of this final act is pretty heavy. Well, it's, um, it's, it's probably the only joke in the entire play. Yeah, it? It, it, mm. it's, the, it's the only point at which the audience might actually get a smile. Mm. Whereas the rest of it, they're going to be, you know, wondering when next the top of them's on. The other thing that struck me is that the play ends incredibly abruptly. There's, mm -hmm, doesn't it? With, with plays of this period, we usually get an epilogue or something that ties up loose ends it doesn't need it but it's interesting that there isn't one yeah it's 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 a bit like a hammer horror film you know they they, they set fire to the mansion and then the the end that's it mm. the, the, there is no coda afterwards uh where where they sort of uh, and oh isn't it sad we had to bury the queen but there, were, there was only ashes and oh what what will carthage do now no just curtain down that's it um uh -huh. And yeah, I, I I love I I really love it for that. Actually, it's brevity. You know, nobody takes the bodies off. Mm. <laughs> there's no one. There's no. There's no one. I think up in Carthage left. I mean, the nurse <laughs> is in prison. Are, are there any other lords in Carthage? Well, you've cut uh, them. No. <laughs> No, no, but they, you, they're you Trojan lords, aren't they? Um, it, no, no, they're Carthaginian. No, there's the Carthaginian lords, but you wouldn't expect the lords to soil their hands with removing the body. Oh, the random first lord, it, yes. It, I, the first lord it, who had two two lines. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, he's no, not it, a character, he doesn't count. It, it's, it's the attendants who dragged the nurse off to Clint. Who, yeah. who've got to come in and do the tidy up. And brought the stuff for the pyre. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> who, who Who's left? I mean, we've not. I, have we met any of the Cloanthus, Acartes, Ilionia? No. They're they're all they're all Trojans. they're all at sea. Yeah, yeah. They're, all, they're all at sea. They're all left. So, I mean, you know, for all we know, the fire gets out of control and everybody dies. Um, you know, it all burns up. Got to yeah. Dameron. <laughs> yeah, but but what I like is that she drew, like Dido draws it. Well, I mean, whoever wrote the play uh, draws a straight line from her to like Hannibal. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is just like, yeah, um, that's part not of, how it really works. Of, yeah. yeah, evidently part of Virgil's motivation for writing this episode was to kind of give an etiology to the really sort of deep hostility between Carthage and Rome. I mean, it was really, it was economic. It's like this, the Mediterranean ain't big enough for the both of us. Yeah. <laughs> mm. 
but it, it kind of did turn personal. Mm. Hannibal hated Rome. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Hannibal really wanted to burn it to the ground. Mm. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, just uh, uh, one of our, our lurkers in the in the chat, Sarah, uh, just just going back to the whole, uh, you know, we were talking about the the nurse scene being a sort of comic <laughs> relief. Well, it would be if it wasn't for fact it's with Cupid, who everyone has we have established is just creepy as hell. Uh, so the scene on the surface is quite comic, but actually, it's slightly disturbing as well, um, as all of the god scenes are to a degree. There's there, there's something really. The gods just leave carnage behind. There's just nothing. It's ash, 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 uh, all the way. I mean, we've just had Troy, um, and you know that's that's all going back to a whole who gets the apple thing. Um, it's all God. The gods are such, such. Yeah, but then that sort of permeates through to Dido as well, because Dido sort of goes, "Yeah, these peasants, nobody cares what they think. I'll kill them." Mm. Um, yeah, I it, it, I, I, again, Sarah, Sarah in the chat, uh, just make this point. It's a shame actually that there isn't a closing god scene where they're all going, Well, yeah. that went well. Uh, <laughs> we get what we want, you know, we don't yeah. care. Yeah, hey, he's off to found Rome. What about the collateral damage? Shush, there wasn't any. It's fine. It was all fine. I mean, it's a hell of a price to get your boats repaired, isn't it? This, this, that, that was yeah. it. That was it. He just wanted his boats repaired. And the gods do all of this to make that happen. Uh, Alan. Or, or you could have the gods come down to the front and have a barbecue. Mm. I, 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 yeah, they're, they're stat Cupid's there Roasting with marshmallows, marshmallows. on, on yeah. a stick. Yeah. yeah, I quite like that. Uh, for a stage yeah. version, we could definitely do that. Um, so, uh, Lynn. Yeah, the, 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 this universe where with the gods is... It's really weird. Um, actually, the, in in the myths and here, the gods perf behave kind of how you would expect if you were basically temperamentally, psychologically human, but never had to pay any consequences for anything you did. <laughs> um, that's like that's how that's that's how how gods would behave if that were what they were if those things were true about them. Um, but they, you know, this is kind of supposed to, you know, supposed to, the, the the whole story of Aeneas is like, the national epic, it's about dignity, it's about destiny, it's about, ooh, aren't, you know, it's the big foam finger, Rome is number one. Um, but the gods really kind of debase the whole thing. Um, that it just comes down to these sort of animal emotions. Oh, I can't live without you. Oh, you know, step, step, step. Like, mm -hmm. like where's the dignity? Where's the, where's the honor? Where's the... The play does start with, uh, you know, a, a god who wants to to go off with a child. It's 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 really creepy in all of the ways, all the way through, uh, especially considering you know this is something designed to be performed by boys as well. So it's um uh, with a with a fair age range from very young to to older. So there's something really very freaky about all of this um, that that this play is doing, um, and yeah. Uh, I was just talking on the audio uh, front of things. Uh, there, there, there was a BBC radio version of this, which I, I have, I have downloaded. I'm going to listen to it soon. Uh, I've been aware of it for ages. It is now actually commercially available. You can get their complete Marlowe box set. Um, uh, but they had to cut it. There was a there was a time slot issue, so it had to be under an hour. Uh, slightly under an oh, hour. Oh wow, that's actually quite a bit of cutting. That's a lot of cutting. So I'm quite curious to see how they they've 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 done it i mean we don't have that problem you know i want to get it a little shorter but i'm i'm not i don't need to get it down to under an hour so i'm i'm, I'm not really worried about you know using it as a baseline because i think we've made our decisions but i'm very curious to see how they did that um because i say that's that's over a third of the text i think um that's mm. a lot of words um and i'm i'm sure there must be some damage in there uh before but i don't know we shall see when we listen to it uh anyway um we have our own version to do at some point any final thoughts on the room uh, uh, uh alan any final thoughts yeah i mean the, the comment that was made about the gods behaving badly i mean did seem to be very much in alignment with the metallic age plays which i appreciate are several years later than this mm. 
but which we, I think, agreed were a reasonably accurate depiction of Greek myth as it was understood at that time in world history. Mm. Uh, and ba basically, anyone who used them as any form of moral guideline was going to be in serious trouble. Mm, yes, I mean, the, in a sense, the, the 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 tonal shifts there are so much more extreme than here. Uh, mm. This always has a slight creeping uh, awkwardness under the surface, and it isn't mostly. It's not playing for laughs. The problem with the age plays um, is that they veer from comedy, 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 rah, sexual assault, uh, extreme violence, and then back to comedy. And it's tonally so difficult to maneuver because you're going. I yeah. don't know what to do with this because sometimes yeah. it's brilliant and sometimes it's just, oh God, no, oh God, no. Uh, what are you as a playwright trying to do? <laughs> um, Eric, any final thoughts? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's, I, I mean, I like this play, but also don't. But yeah, I mean, um, I do like the screeching halt though at the end where it's just like, I will end this play no matter what. <laughs> um, I do like how, well, I kind of feel like it gets two epilogues, though, because Dido gets her dying speech and then, I mean, or maybe three, I don't know, if you count Yarbus, but because um, you get like three consecutive dying speeches, which is basically an epilogue, <laughs> if you think about it. It's like, he I, he's he gone, therefore I'm dying, and recap of what's just happened, um, and, you know, look into the future, then Yarbus sort of kills himself because of that, and then and then Anna. So I just find it interesting that Anna is the one to end the play as opposed to Dido. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. He, Anna does get a decent death speech, actually. It's, it's quite nice. Whereas Yarbus, he gets three lines death. Um, sort of quite in line with him, really. I think it sort of all fits very nicely. Um, uh, Lynn, any final thoughts? Um, how am I going to articulate this? Um... Like, <laughs> like Eric, I, I like this play and, and and I don't like this play. Um, I kind of like the sort of over the top ex the extraness of the character. It's like, um, oh, my boyfriend left me. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw myself on a funeral pyre. Um, just sort of doesn't hold back on that those extreme emotions. And there's something kind of actually enjoyable about that. Um, but it also it 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 also really undermines the sort of dignity and import of the story. So how do you how do you balance that? Do you just go for the crazy emotions and forget that it's part of a a, a, a national epic, or do you try to keep that sense of it being part of a larger important story? Um, yeah. Uh, and how do you yeah how do you keep your audience? engaged with um with characters like Anna and Iarbis and Dido and Aeneas who are kind of acting like hormonal adolescents. <laughs> uh, yeah, you want you want your audience to take them somewhat seriously, I think. Um and particularly in an audio version where you don't have visuals um to to signal to the audience that these are people that are worthy of their respect of your respect. How do you do that? Mm, yeah, I mean, I'm just uh, sort of doing a sort of thought experiment here. If we if we thought of um, Cupid not having an arrow but a syringe full of LSD, <laughs> there you go. The ending uh. of this is is straightforward. You know, just I can fly, I can fly uh, off the top of a building. It's that kind of removal of agency, and it's just because this what we've got here is it's a magical arrow. It makes you love. Um, it's like nobody here has has full agency over their actions. Aeneas doesn't really have any, you know, because a god turns up and says, you've got to go. Um, because if a god does that, you've kind of got to go. Uh, he doesn't really have a choice there. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 it's this humans as just pawns. And, and how do you relate to that? And how do you respond to that? That's, in a sense, the tragedy of Dido. Um, she mm -hmm. could have lived on and been a perfectly happy queen, and there if was no. Yeah. And she probably repaired the boats anyway. Yeah, she was. She was quite convivial at the beginning before she before Act Three. It wasn't until Act Three she gets stabbed by the arrow. Um, you know, and she was quite sympathetic and quite liked him. 
So none of this is necessary. That's the tragedy, I think, here. Yeah. Um, they could have all lived... But the, but the gods are just so insensitive to human mm. suffering. It's like, oh, I want to make sure Dido takes care of him, so I'll make her fall in love. Like, yeah. well, you could what just, can possibly go wrong? Just, right. just use your magical powers to just repair the boats. I mean, it's, it's rules about what gods can and cannot do, and I'm sort of going, come on. It's yeah. a bit of whittling. Can you do some whittling? <laughs> anyway, sorry, Eric. Uh, I was just going to say that it's basically in line with all the tragedies, like, um, I don't know, um, I mean, like, classical Greek tragedies where you've got stuff like, um, I don't know, um, maybe not Antigone, but I can think of, like, Medea, where you've got, like, the gods sort of going, yeah, we're not here, so we'll just let them sort of kill her kids. And it, it's like that level of carnage, except they, if you, because they give her agency in that one. And it's just like, it doesn't make sense for her to kill her children. Whereas here, I mean, okay, as much as the character justifies it and so on and so forth, you know, madness, whatever. Whereas here, if you remove the gods, then what's left is quite, I don't know, it's, it's quite weird as well. If you think about it. <laughs> mm, yeah. If you don't have the gods making them do this, uh, why are they doing things? And it's sort of, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going to close the session there. Uh, we will return to Dido um, in a, a hopefully a live capacity uh, by the time you watch this video. It, it will have actually happened, fingers crossed. And this recording will be released in the run up to the release of the recording that had happened about a year before this is how the runtime and the lead out of this stuff happens so um we'll be releasing this as a sort of precursor to the version of the thing that we used this to make happen and that's the process that we do um so me from the past thank all the wonderful readers for all their wonderful reading thank you very much everyone and goodbye ah!